Hello lovelies, Leslie, not quite enough distance. Now as you can see by the fact that I'm in my podcast chair, I'm recording bits of podcast today because I have finished my mate Mandy's gloves. So these were in Fruitful Fusions Merino Nylon DK. She wanted fingerless gloves. That's what she's got. And they were made adapting a bit of paper, these are my notes, um, from this pattern that has been in the family vault for probably about 40, 50 years, uh, an old Serda pattern. And I just use it as the basis, so. <sighs> Hope everyone's okay. Thank you for all the comments and thoughts and observations and for letting me know what your porn names are. Love it. <laughs> very hot here um it's saturday as i'm recording we are due to um do a circuit of hell according to the temperatures um it's going to get hotter potentially than it has ever been recorded in the uk so that's good yes they're worried about train tracks buckling and uh power going out and that sort of thing so um yeah, if we see the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming over the hill, we'll know that it is the end of times. Apart from that, I hope you're all well. And I'll catch up with you later. Cheers. So tell me, Les, how did you spend your weekend? Well, on Saturday evening, I spent a bit of time turning my pirate hat into a tricorn. Doesn't everyone? Hello, lovelies. Another weekend, another bit of dressing up, another haven't left myself enough time. Uh, the difference this week is that I'm wearing what I would describe as actual makeup rather than face paint. It's um, Pirate Day, well it's Pirate Weekend. Um, in Hastings we hold the record for the most, the largest number of people dressed as pirates in one area. And we're in the Guinness Book of Records and all that. Uh, I was one of them, obviously. Uh, that was before I was a drummer. That was when I was just daft. Um, we held the record for a while. And then Penzance stole it from us. So then we got it back. Um, and it's kind of grown from there into a festival. Hence we're drumming and that sort of thing. Um, and basically it's a lot of people dressed as pirates. Of course, these days, if you say pirates, people think the sentence is followed by, or the word is completed by, of the Caribbean. So a very high proportion of Captain Jacks will be seen. But, uh, it's a fun thing. And we are in no, day, in no way condoning piracy. Uh, we are talking ancient piracy, which, you know, we're not condoning that either. But it's not um, condoning you know, people who go sailing and then get taken over and all sorts of stuff. So, yes, that's what we're doing today. Because why not? Um, it's one of those events that's kind of good for the town. I mean, we have a lot of smuggling connections rather than piracy. Not condoning that either, but it is part of the history. Um, but uh, it's good for the town. It gets a lot of people in. Very good for the pubs. And given how all the hospitality has struggled over COVID, it's nice that uh, there's an opportunity for them to try and recoup some losses. So. So I think it's not going to be terribly sophisticated makeup, mostly smudged, which mine is generally anyway, of course, but deliberately so this time. <laughs> On a day-to-day -day basis, as you would have realised, I'm not a massive wearer of makeup. A little bit of eyes, a little bit of lips, that's me. So it is quite odd to suddenly have a sort of dramatic colour and... And sometimes I even wish I could be bothered to do it more, but let's not. So, 
it is very hot out there we are in a heat wave we've got an amber heat warning so i'm not going to do a lot more than eyes and lips today just in much more dramatic shades than i would normally do um because within about five minutes it's going to be sliding down my face anyway it's attractive isn't it so <laughs> Oh dear. Now I could be doing this with black face paint, obviously. But last week, um, the side of my face I'd done with black face paint, I had a very watery eye. And that continued on into Sunday. So it occurs to me that um, maybe the black face paint doesn't agree with me. So I will be using more black traditional cosmetics moving forward and today will be a good test to see how it lasts right so I've got treasure and my cutlass on my drum when I say treasure obviously I mean you know plastic beads but that's okay the carnival is over back from drumming uh, after saying I was only going to do lips and um, eyes, I found some pens which enabled me to do these kind of scar looking things. So they were a two second wonder. So. Oh, it is a day that's been saved by a sea breeze, thankfully. Um, it was pretty warm. The beach was full of people, as you'd expect. Uh, but the breeze coming from the sea helped a lot. So it kept it much more civilised. And that's not to say we weren't happy to be uh, in a little shaded place <laughs> when we found one. Uh, um, at the end of the, the drumming, so you had drum groups coming from two different directions on the seafront, ending up in a place which was marked off. And there were about five of us and we then each played a tune um one of our our pieces after that there was a a group sort of historic um reenactment group that were there with a cannon and uh, by that i mean a cannon that shoots cannonballs not a minister of religion uh, <laughs> well there may have been um the reason for the, the big event this year, I mean, there's, there's Pirate Day every year, but this year it's 10 years since we got that record back from Penzance and we've been in the Guinness Book of Records ever since. So the cannon was shooting 10 times, one for each year. The announcement beforehand was very careful to say, you know, Make sure that if you have children or dogs with you, that their ears are protected. Um, this is live cannon. You know, it was in a very empty area. I'll put some footage in and was shooting out to sea. Slightly worrying for the people rowing past and yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, they, they'd obviously taken a lot of care over um, where to shoot, how to shoot, all of those things. Um, but all this health and safety stuff about protecting one's ears. So we were standing there. And luckily where we were, I had no one in front of me. I had a very good view. This thing went off and it sort of went. Pfft. I thought, that's not it. Our drums are louder than that. So bless them, they carried on. And then a couple of the guys from another drum group and me were trying to hit our drum to match the cannon exploding <laughs> to give it a decent sound effect we weren't terribly successful on that but uh, <laughs> but it was a fun event i mean money was raised for charity um mostly for the rnli which is the lifeboat institute um the coast guard is government funded but the lifeboats are all funded um, through charitable donations. We have a big lifeboat station in Hastings. 
so they were there with their uh, collection buckets which is absolutely fine and um, also if you wanted to have your photograph taken with the cannon donation to the lifeboats you know so that was all good that was all good um, yeah so we that was our sort of main parade we'd had a bit of a drumming before then sort of when we'd met through the town stopping at various places quite well received wherever we went I mean there were lots of drum groups around so uh, drums were hard to avoid in Hastings today but uh, that's what we do um, yeah and then after the cannon I know a few of the guys were heading off to a pub to get something to drink something to eat but uh, I was kind of done um, the breeze really helped but it was still a hot day and been on my feet for a few hours so I thought time to go home because I have a ceremony tomorrow so I don't want to be achy and exhausted just because I've been out partying sort of thing so came home had a cup of tea himself made me a cup of tea because he's a good lad and, uh, and now I'm removing the day or as much of it as I can get off at this point so. but yeah it was it was good fun um, these things always are well supported lots of people around um, the weather really helped with that one some places were really busy um, got footage here of a street in the old town that was pretty rammed and then there's people walking their dogs through and I'm thinking why have you brought your dog today it's very hot there are lots of people there's going to be a lot of noise why have you brought your dog your dog will be very happy at home curled up asleep somewhere but I know some people they take the dogs everywhere with them and you know that's fine but you just feel it was just so busy and the streets are quite narrow because they're old and there was a dog sort of hidey size that got stepped on so it's because the poor thing got not not hurt but tail trodden on you know the sort of thing that's going to frighten and distress the poor little thing so. so yes I couldn't really understand why people were doing that but I've never professed to be able to understand people but that was Sunday uh, the t-shirt although I've worn it before was a hit you can have my chest but leave my, be my booty alone. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All good fun. I'll catch up with you later in the week. Cheers. Hello lovelies. I'm recording this on Tuesday, which is the 19th. Is it? Yeah. And uh, it's just gone seven o'clock in the evening. I'm working on split shifts this week because this room gets so hot when the sun moves round that I'm kind of having my evening sitting in the armchair downstairs knitting during the afternoons and now I'm just going to finish off some work. Um, it's been the hottest day ever recorded in the UK today which is 40 degrees and I'm just going to work out 40 Celsius to Fahrenheit so that's over 100 it's 104. Um, hottest ever recorded temperature in the UK and I know that for many of you um, that's not an unexceptional temperature but that's the thing it's exceptional here or it always has been um, and our houses and our buildings you know we in our domestic buildings we tend not to have air conditioning they're designed to keep in heat not to to keep it cool so the British public have been struggling a bit um, <laughs> The railway lines have been buckling, that sort of thing. Uh, tarmac on the runway at Luton Airport was melting yesterday. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, <laughs> but the wind has now got up. One can only hope that there's a storm brewing to uh, throw a little bit of precipitation down and uh, cool the air a bit and clear the air. It's When we get hot weather, it's very humid. And so it's really felt quite oppressive and... And I haven't felt as if I've been struggling to breathe, you know, anything with my lungs or my chest or my breath. Just it feels like there's not enough air in the air, if you know what I mean. And if you don't, I don't blame you at all, because that was a largely nonsense sentence. But, um, yeah, that's where we are. 
So I hope you're all okay. If you're in the UK, I hope you've managed to keep cool and to keep comfortable. Um, if you're elsewhere in the world, I also hope you're comfortable. I don't wish anyone to be uncomfortable just because they're not here. So, <laughs> so I hope everyone's okay and I'll catch up with you later in the week. Cheers. Hello lovelies. You know the temperature's dropped but you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I had two visits today so that meant two changes of clothes. This wasn't one of them. Third change of clothes into something more comfortable. <laughs> Excuse me. I will stop complaining about the weather at some point. Hope everyone's okay. I hope wherever you are you are comfortable and having fun with whatever you're doing. I have been working at Craft Wise I haven't finished the Paris sweater yet. I'm hopefully going to put that together over the weekend. I have been working on the panel jacket and I have the sleeves to sew in. But last night uh, at knit night, I was struggling with how best to do that. So I was working on the ends because there are many. Each panel has two ends and each seam has two ends because of the way it's constructed. So... Um, I was tempted to keep it as a fringed a fringed jacket at some at one point. But this is where we're at. So I've still got the sleeves to go on and still got some ends to weave in. But I did quite a few of those during um knit night last night, so uh, so that was good. So hopefully this will also be finished over the weekend. Um yeah, that's been mainly the crafty stuff. That those final stages feel like they've taken a long time and I don't know if it's because um, I made the panels on the machine so that felt very quick in comparison but making the shawl collar felt like a lot of knitting all the the joining together because there are a lot more seams than you would have on any sort of usual construction sweater so yeah it's, it's uh, I'm a victim of my own uh, idea there but it just feels like it's taking a long time so I thought that would be finished this week and it's not quite but hopefully soon. So, um, this week himself is going away again. He didn't bring me back any yarn. He does listen. Uh, the difficulty will come when I want him to start again. I'm going to have to be quite subtle about that. <laughs> and as we know, subtlety is not my forte, but we'll give it a go. Uh, yeah, he's going away Saturday until Friday. Various sporting things. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a quiet one. This has been a, a period of kind of changed plans due to weather and other commitments. So didn't get to meet the lovely person I was hoping to. Maybe soon, maybe another day, hopefully. Um, and there was going to be a, a social event this weekend that now isn't happening. But I'm quite happy to stay at home with the dog. Hopefully finish the Paris sweater and that panel sweater. And then the phone rang. That was a, a work call, arranging an appointment. After saying last week, it's still not that busy. It's got busier. Um, I've had sort of stuff every day this week. Uh, I've done, like I say, two visits today. Uh, next week is filling up fairly heartily. Um, yeah, it's all keeping me on my toes. About time something did. Still got all the windows open, so the seagulls are having a chat, as is their want. Anyway, I will stop waffling, but I will wish you all a very good week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your, your comments, your thoughts, your observations. I am um, I love to hear from you, and uh, I'm up to date with my messages now. Yay! So, um, yes, if you've got any questions or anything you want to say, please do. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, another six brain cells bite the dust. So I will see you all next week. Thank you so much. Take good care. Look after yourselves. Thank you. Bye-bye.